Artie Lang Show app. Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show, and with me now is uh, Mandy Statmiller, host of News Whore, a new podcast that's been, uh, well, it, it was launched in July, consistently in the top 100 for comedy and iTunes, uh, debuted at number 22. So, uh, who's been your, who's like a favorite guest? Do you have someone you just like loved interviewing? Colin Quinn was great because yeah, he's he was, always good. Yeah, he was the first guest, and what do it, you talk to Colin about? Like someone like you who's followed him, do you do you want his thoughts on like you know the road, or comedy, no, politics? I just don't. just like what do you just talk about with Colin? Well, so I you know him. I yeah. Well, I actually did a lot of research before. That's like one of my favorite things is just to go. Right. Deep, deep. He's an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah, and so I, and whenever I find that someone has been on the record and open about their sexual proclivities, right. and like the most embarrassing stuff, if you start there, then it <laughs> kind of like opens up into he pretty got raw nutty, uh, territory. He got nutty on a couple, uh, stern a couple yeah. of times yeah, with a cat. Or exactly. Something. <laughs> yeah. So we started with a cat. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, nothing like crazy, crazy. And uh, yeah. then I also <laughs> talked to him about his Terry Gross interview. Because he talked to her about political correctness. I'd love to hear him on Terry Gross. Yeah. I've never heard that It's before. pretty funny, yeah. yeah. Because he tells a joke that's a racially charged joke that he told to Chappelle, I believe. Yeah. And Terry didn't laugh. Okay. And he was like, come on, it's funny. But she was kind of, you know, covering her ass. Yeah, sure. That if she laughed, <laughs> it might be, you know, a headline or something. No, I, I've, I've, I've done two interviews with Terry Gross, and both times she was real fair to me and wonderful. It helped, it helped sell books, and it was good for my movie and stuff. But she, she's, she's like, you could tell, so she easily, like... <laughs> Frail and like, you know, if she, you scare her, frail you know, is the word. If you if you yeah. scare her, you're like, whoa, you're almost afraid. Like, I don't, I don't mean to offend you. I mean, everything's all right. You know? Yeah, Mike Birbiglia <laughs> did a weird, funny, strange, fascinating video promoting Sleepwalk with me, and it's uh -huh. with Terry Gross. Okay, and it was the first time I saw what she looked like. Right, she's very, she's very. You tiny. don't yeah. picture that, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, well, I th what about like covering New York City for uh -huh. the New York Post? So what I mean, was have you that? ever had any like like stuff? Were like, ever... have I, have I, here, here's the question to ask: You say, Mandy, have you ever slept with a source? <laughs> and how did that compromise your integrity as a reporter? Besides that, <laughs> um, I'm just saying, covering you was there anything like you're cosmopolitan, you're hip? Anything shock you? Like covering New York, where you were like, "Wow!" The like, most, I don't even think something like that goes on. Yeah, I mean, I think the most starstruck I ever was when was was when I went to Bungalow Eight when Amy Sacco was still reigning yeah. supreme. Yeah, when the meatpacking district wasn't like yeah. a circus, right? And it was the after party for one of those Warhol films, right. and so the Full House girls, the Olsen twins, were like chain smoking inside the club. Right. And then I just remember seeing Amy Sacco like holding hands with Axl Rose, kind of jumping <laughs> in a in a planter, you know. And I was just like, "Oh my God, I found it! This is the celebrity playground. This is what it's about." <laughs> right. Like I don't know if you've ever read the modern Studio Fifty Four in a way. Yeah. yeah. There's, uh, there's or Plato's Retreat, whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where you know a lot of people talk about in reporting, you know access versus criticism right because if you like you were saying oh you were fair well other people would say you know mandy you're just like a suck up to comics right, like, why right, don't right. you why didn't and you there's do that some... fine line you're walking yeah yeah, yeah 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 well did that happen a lot do you, your your colleagues in journalism ever ever say like um, uh you know you're being too fair here too lenient too biased on a certain subject i don't I mean, I, I, what you know, well, so the reason, hard I'll tell you the reason to that gain a trust and keep it. And exactly. Not and that's what people up. don't. Yeah. That's what people don't realize right. who've never gotten access. And sure. it's definitely a fine line of not being a sellout versus how do you keep that going? Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I'll tell you um, the reason that I left the post. It was a it was a moment um, where I had gotten an interview with Gail King, mm -hmm. and you know she's a lovely woman, right? And they basically wanted me to spin it as 
Gail King is finally breaking out of Oprah's <laughs> shadow. Right. And she's so happy to get out of Oprah's clutches doing this morning show. Right. And it just wasn't the case. Right. And I wasn't really being given an option to write it any other way. So I, you know, line edited it and changed words here and there so that it wasn't insiders say, but instead critics. So you could tell that it was just whatever Jagoff pundit wanted to uh -huh. get in the newspaper that day. Because, and you felt like that was something you couldn't go back from, well, integrity-wise. No, I mean, it's not even that bad. It was just, I think because it was like, I, I spent an hour with, and I told her, actually, because Jenny Hutt yeah. um, comped me to a Tony Robbins seminar. <laughs> and who's behind me at the Tony Robbins seminar but Gail King. Right. And so <laughs> I told her the whole story. And yeah, I think she was kind of tickled. But I mean, there was there was a lot of things kind of along the way. And I love It could be minor. It doesn't have to yeah. be like a major thing, but it could be a minor thing that represents something bigger. Yeah. You know, like, like, I mean, like, I was like, I you know, I don't know if you read I got I got flack and kudos for I had gone on a couple dates with um Aaron Sorkin and yes. then he took yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He took um, a conversation we had about how I I was assigned and made to do a takedown piece of Bethany Frankel, even though I liked her. Right. Um, and he had that be like a, a plot point, but that's kind of a good example, you know. Bethany Frankel is like. But I mean, so, so, so someone came to a boss, an editor comes to you and says, "Look, we, we're out for her. Yeah. And we want you to go and get the. I mean, that's what and the if post it's a, does. And if you come back, right? I know. Yeah. Well, what, do, do you consider the post at its very worst, like uh, guilty of extortion? I mean, blatant extortion. I don't think out. so. No. I I mean, I mean, maybe what that, about what maybe that what, I What don't about know what him. happened with the? I'm forgetting his name. I, I think mean, it was all clear though, wasn't but, it? But that guy got fired. And yeah, right? yeah, the, that the, guy the, got fired. I'm forgetting the business guy's name. Jared Stern, and I think his wife had a weird sex tape. And no, the, the guy, the guy wasn't it were, Jared Paul the, Stern? The, the billionaire that they were they were targeting right, right, right. for a while. Um, uh, Burkle. Burkle, yeah, yeah, Ron Burkle, yeah. Ron Burkle, yeah. and they yeah. were like they were saying like supposedly one of the guy, I forget the guy's name now, writer for Page Six was yeah. basically going to the guy and saying, look, if you want protection, there's level one protection, right, right, right. Protection. I won't. I, I, we yeah, got I don't, on I don't you. really think. I mean, I think that I, I was just talking to, I was just talking to a um, gossip editor the other day that was telling me how some guy got his book deal because he basically had access via his badge or something like that right. to some court records, took it into the movie studio, said, do you want me to publish these divorce records? And he got a book deal. <laughs> Brutal. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. And it's also the way the world works. Some people would say grow up, which is the way the world works, you know? Yeah. But there's levels of it. Like this guy Burkle, look, this guy Burkle obviously, to get that far in business, to get that kind of money, he's probably got bodies laying in his wake, whatever. Who knows what's justified? But what the, what, what this guy was doing to him is really like as un-American as it gets. Like, look, I'm, I won't write this crap about you right. if you give me two and, and honestly, I you think a, I think a lot of that is overblown. I mean, I think for the most part, I I, I mean, I love the New York Post, and I love a lot of editors. I love and it too. I can't there. live without it. I love yeah. it. It's, it's a guilty pleasure yeah. on every level. I mean, I think no matter you know. what you say about it, the reason that a paper like the Times always chokes when it comes to gossip is that you can't do gossip without getting your hands dirty. Right. You're not going to be able to do it and they'd in rather this play pristine, it safe. effete way. They'd rather yeah. play it safe, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, and, There's and always going to be kind of quid pro quo back scratching. And, and I think a lot sketchy. of I think a lot of so-called intellectuals love the post and and oh, absolutely. and refuse to admit it and I hate that. I hate <laughs> that. All right, we're going to take another break and when we come back again the the host of News Horror uh, the podcast you should be listening to, Mandy Statmiller, back uh, when uh, finish up the shindig after this. Welcome back to the Artie Lag Show. Talking with Mandy Statmiller, my friend. She's a uh, host of a News Horror podcast. You can check out on iTunes. You know, I must say, when I went through, you know, one of my several hells I've gone through in my life, and uh, but the latest one back in 2010 when I, you know, I, I, I was doing heroin and I stabbed myself nine times and uh, went into a couple of mental institutions, psych wards. Uh, I, I was in one psych ward, and I was basically catatonic, and a family member came to visit me, and nothing was really cheering me up, and somebody uh, put in front of me an article that Mandy had written about me, uh, where she uh, quoted an interview she did with me, and, and it made me smile, I must say, because I could tell from reading it that uh, she was someone who actually cared about me. 
if I could, and it goes back to what we were talking about before, like maintaining a trust, maintaining yeah. a trust here and there, or accurately reporting. Because, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a bunch of different things could be written. But I always, uh, you know, I thanked you uh, privately, but publicly, I'd like to say I appreciated that. Oh well, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I... and it meant a lot to me. It did, and it, I could see that you were in that article. You know, like, look, here's a guy I think's an all right guy, and he's got his demons, but let's not beat him up too much. And, and here's what he told me once about the life of a comic and maybe the psychology of it a little bit. And it was nice. It was honest. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, it was... Uh, it, we, we were talking about how one of your favorite games on stage is to make the audience hate you as much as possible <laughs> right, dig, a dig yourself into as deep of a hole yeah. as you can <laughs> and then see if you can win him back yeah and then um dr phil mandy <laughs> said do you think you ever do that in your personal life right. which is a great question yeah it's a great question the yeah. answer is of course yes yeah uh, but you time. don't anymore because no. you're engaged uh, yeah to... well listen who knows what's gonna happen no don't be like that but you no, be I, positive. I, I am i am positive and uh you know again it's it's uh I'm in a great situation right now with a great person, but and the self-destructive part. But it also goes back to th the reason why that's a great question is 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 it's the mentality of being a gambler. It's that risk. It's one. It's exciting. That, oh yeah, it's yeah. wanting that constant action. I got all the chips right now. Mm -hmm. How do I lose them all and then try to get them back? Sure. You know? Yeah. And and and, and the, the sad thing about a gambler is, and that mentality is. If you don't have that action and that juice, sometimes is life even worth living? You know? Right. Like, yeah. I, well, I don't want. I don't want it to be safe. Yeah. I mean, you know? I think the key is to try and fake it in other areas. You yeah. know. It's just difficult. I yeah. admire people who are able to do that, but. Uh, yeah, I, I don't do it a lot of times. A lot of times, I, I feel just kind of bored with life, and I want. I'm trying to think of the last time I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> I think it was actually when I went over to a guy's house and hooked up with him. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> because, like, there's just something exciting. What a life simple pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the other day I turned a guy away because my dog, um... C blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> well, why else have a dog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you trust like your that. dog's opinion on guys sometimes? I kind of do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> why not? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, so anyway, how do we find, tell us exactly how to find the podcast. What do we do? Yeah, so uh, we are part of the Riot Cast Network, which right. also is Rich Voss's show is on there. And actually, there's going to be a show with a lot of the Riot Cast people. They haven't announced the exact date, but it's going to be, you know, like Bobby Kelly and oh, cool. all those people. Yeah. I love all those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but you can go to riotcast.com slash newshor and just click subscribe and it's free and you'll get all of these great insights plus the occasional story about me trying to get a male masseur to... <laughs> You know, I know, I hear you. Do that Listen, thing. Just to type in uh, sla uh, a backslash or slash news whore, it's worth it. Uh, Rich Voss, <laughs> I love you. Thank you. Brent Stover and Mandy, thanks so much. Come back anytime. Thanks. The Artie Lang Show. See you tomorrow night, guys.